In this tutorial, we are going to talk about conservation of energy. So, what is this conservation of energy? So, conservation of energy states that energy cannot be formed or created, but it can be transformed from one state to another. What it means there is that if we have got a tall building, and let's assume to say we have got a, a bow on top, and we know that this building is going to have the height which we are going to call H. Okay? So at this point, this object is not moving, meaning that it has potential energy at its maximum position. Okay? Meaning that since it's not moving, when an object is not moving, we don't expect to have kinetic energy. At this point, kinetic energy is zero. Now, we know that mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So, if the kinetic energy is zero, we can see that mechanical energy at that point is going to be equal to potential energy. Okay? Now, immediately when this object starts moving, it's going to leash at the middle here. So, as it is moving, some of the potential energy, they are going to be converted to what? kinetic energy. It's not that the kinetic, the potential energy is going to be lost, no, but it's going to be converted to what? To kinetic energy. As it is going to reach uh, on the middle here, you are going to discover to say half of the potential energy is going to be converted to what? Kinetic energy. So we're going to have the kinetic energy to be equal to potential energy. Okay? Now, immediately when it is just before it hit the ground, you are going to discover that the H is going to be zero. We don't expect to have what? Potential energy. Potential energy is going to be zero and we are going to have what? Kinetic energy at the maximum position. Now, what we have to understand here is that all the energy which we had here at point, let me, let's call this point M, this point B, this point C. All the energy which we had at point A, which is potential energy, once we reach at point B, half of potential energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy. Once we reach at point C, all the potential energy which we had at point A, they're going to be converted to what? Kinetic energy. So that's why we are saying that energy cannot be created or cannot be formed, but it can be are transformed from one energy to another. So you can only transform the energy from potential energy to kinetic energy or from kinetic energy to potential energy. Now, let's assume to say this object is going up. Okay? So once it reaches down here, you are going to discover that the mechanical energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy. As simple as that. Now, let's assume to say this object is, is going up. Okay, so what's going to happen? So if this object is going up, as it is moving at this point here, it's going to have kinetic energy at its maximum. Potential energy at that point is going to be zero. Once it reaches here, we're going to have kinetic energy to be equal to potential energy. Half of kinetic energy is going to be converted to what? To potential energy. We're going to have the H. Here, once we reach here, we are going to discover that all the kinetic energy is going to be zero. All the kinetic energy is, uh, is going to be converted to, uh, to potential energy. And we are going to have potential energy at the maximum position. As simple as that. So, in short, what we are trying to say here is that whenever we are talking about conservation of energy, the mechanical energy initial has to be equal to the mechanical energy final. What it means here is that the mechanical energy is the addition of the potential energy. So we need, we mean potential energy pl initial plus kinetic energy initial has to be equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So in short, this is the general formula for conservation of energy. Conservation of energy, energy is not lost. What it means there is that there is no friction. Okay. So all the energy which you are going to have is going to be converted to what? It's going to be converted to another energy. Okay? So that is conservation of energy. Now, let's say we have a question like this. Okay? Let's have this question. So this question is saying, 
a child and a slit weighing 200 newton slide down an ice covered frictionless meaning there is no friction so this is going to be conservation of energy so they're saying that um, a hill that is 10 meters high with respect to a level ground at the bottom of the hill there is an ice free punch the horizontal surface bring the slid to a stop within a distance of 25 meters okay so the question is what is the coefficient of friction between the slid learner and the horizontal surface now here they're asking about the friction which was there which was there between this but we can find the the from this point a all the way to b it was frictionless so we can find the velocity at point b okay using conservation of energy the, we have been told that the h is 10 meters so what we're going to do is that we're going to say the mechanical energy at point A has to be equal to the mechanical energy at point B. Okay. There we go. Now we can see that the mechanical energy at point A, we have the potential energy at point A plus kinetic energy at point A has to be equal to the potential energy at point B plus the kinetic energy at point B. Okay, at point A, do we expect to have kinetic energy? Yes, because we do have height. Now the question is saying, um, we can see that at point A, we don't expect to have kinetic energy, so we can cancel this kinetic energy. At point B, we don't expect to have potential energy because the h is zero. We don't expect to have it, so we're going to have potential energy at A has to be equal to kinetic energy at B meaning that all the energy which we are going to have at A is going to be converted to kinetic energy at point B as simple as that so this is going to be MGH is going to be equal to half MV uh, squared we can cancel M and we're going to have GH will be equal to half V squared we want to find the value of V Let's do times 2 for us to get rid of half. 2GH will be equal to V squared. We get the square root of both sides. We can see that V will be equal to the square root of 2GH. Let's plug in the values. So V will be equal to... So 2 times 9.8 times H is 10. Okay. So what are we going to have... We are going to have 2 times 10 times um, 9.8. We can see that it's going to be um, 98. So what is 98 times 2? 98 times 2 is 196. Now, what is the square root of 196? Okay. So, the square root of 196 is giving me 14. So, our velocity in this case is going to be at point B is going to be uh, 14 meters per second. Meaning that this is the velocity at this point. Okay. At B, the velocity there is what? Is uh, 14 meters per second. But uh, they are saying that uh, as, it, as it was uh, coming at this point here, it was coming to rest and there was friction which was present. The only force which has been mentioned here is the friction force. Okay. Meaning that... Uh, at this point, what we have to understand is that um, the work done, if you want, you can use, so now the question is saying use energy method. So we can't use Newton's laws of motion. So we can see that the work done is going to be the work done by the friction force is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay? So the work done, which we know that uh, the work done is going to be the friction force times the distance is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy we're going to have the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial 
So what we have to understand is that eh, this is going the friction force is going to be mu times the normal force times d. So this is going to be half mv final squared minus half mv initial squared. Remember our initial velocity is going to be this point. The final is going to be zero because it came to rest. Okay. Now this is going to be mu. Remember the friction, the work done by the friction force is going to be negative. So this is going to carry a negative. This is going to be a negative. So we're going to have Fn is mg. So we're going to have this minus. Okay. So the question is, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So what we have to remember is that we don't have the final velocity is going to be zero. We can cancel this. We're going to remain with this mu times mg times d is going to be equal to negative half mv initial squared mv initial m uh, initial we have so we can cancel the mass we're going to have the negative mu gd is negative half v initial v initial squared let's cancel the negative we can see that we are going to have we're going to have mu gd is going to be equal to half v initial squared. At this point, to remove half, I can say times 2, which is going to be 2 mu gd is equal to v initial squared. Let's divide both sides by 2 gd. Even here, 2 gd. These they will cancel. Our mu value is going to be v initial squared divided by 2 gd. Let's plug in the values. We see what we're going to have. So our mu value is going to be the velocity is 14 squared. Everything divided by 2 times g is 9.8. The distance is 25. <laughs> okay. So now, let's see. What is 14 squared? So 14 squared, so our mu value is going to be, what is 14 squared? So 14 squared is 196. We divide it by 0.5 times 9.8, okay, then times 2. I'm getting a 490. So our mu k is going to be 196, everything divided by 490 which is giving me 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is the coefficient of kinetic friction. Now the question is saying use energy method. That's the reason why we have used this one. But you can also use you can also use um, Newton's laws of motion. You can find this answer. So let's see if we can use Newton's laws of motion if we can be able to find the same answer. Remember we have found that our answer is 0 0.4. Okay? Now after reaching at this point, we have come up with the initial velo the, f the, the velocity at this point to be 14 meters per second. There was friction here. When it came here, the final is zero. We can use third equation to say v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a d. Here we can find acceleration. Then we're going to use Newton's laws of motion now. So the final velocity is zero. The initial is 14 squared plus 2. Since it was uh, decelerating, the acceleration is going to be negative. So acceleration, the distance is 25. We shift this one to the other side, we are going to have, we are going to have this. Negative 14 squared is going to be equal to, this is going to be 15m. So 14 is going to be 196, negative 196 is going to be equal to 50, eh, divided by 50, divided by 50, 
acceleration is going to be 14 squared is 196 so what is 196 divided by 50 okay so it's negative 3 since it was decelerating 0.92 meters per second squared after finding this now we can use Newton's laws of motion second laws of motion to find the what the coefficient of kinetic friction the summation of all the forces in x direction the only force which is acting in this case is the friction force friction force remember is going to be what negative so the acceleration here we are going to say mass times acceleration but the acceleration is negative so we're going to say mu times mg which is the normal force okay we can cancel the mass so we can see that we're going to have uh, negative and negative will go acceleration will be equal to mu times g let's divide both sides by g let's divide both sides by g we can see that uh, our mu k will be equal to the acceleration divided by 9 uh, g so mu k acceleration is 3 since we have cancelled the negative already initially it was supposed to be negative negative so negative negative will cancel 0.92 divided by 9.8 so let's see we have 3 3.92 divided by 9.8 so this is giving me exactly 0.4 so as you can see even if we use newton's laws of motion we're going to come up with the same answer but the question is saying use energy method so we can't use this newton's laws of motion but you can use it just to confirm okay so in general when you're talking about um conservation of energy what you have to remember is that uh, energy cannot be cre uh, created okay or it cannot be destroyed but it can be transformed from one state to another so if you have kinetic energy this kinetic energy cannot be lost it's going to be transformed into what another energy okay so in general what you have to understand is that the, the mechanical energy initial has to be equal to the mechanical uh, energy final this is the general formula so we know that the mechanical energy initial is the potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy initial has to be equal to the potential energy final plus the kinetic energy final so this is going to be mg h initial plus half mv initial squared has to be equal to um, mg final mgh final plus half mv final squared so this is the general formula for conservation of energy okay so this is very very important once you know to say at this point maybe the initially if you had potential energy you are going to put potential energy there if you didn't have kinetic energy you have to cancel kinetic energy so that is going to help you to find another another uh, missing variables okay so that is it for conservation of energy next is going to be non-conservation of energy